Imagine if you had endless topics to talk about. I'm dating coach and TED speaker Hayley Quinn and I know perhaps one of the biggest fears with dating is running out of conversation. Now, a great way that you can never worry about running out of conversation is to become a far better storyteller. If you have a pause in the conversation, guess what? A story is a great way to fill that. And also if you think about it, if you can just imagine if you wrote your whole life down into books, you could fill a library with all that information about yourself. So if you've got the information about yourself in your back pocket, if you're a good storyteller, you don't need to worry about running out of things to talk about. So in this video, I'm going to teach you a very simple <laughs> seven point structure for telling a story. Of course, there's loads of different structures for stories and anecdotes, but hopefully this one is simple, it's applicable and it's going to be something you can quickly learn this afternoon and go out and use on your dates later on. So the first step of telling a great story is we need a headline, kind of like a newspaper. So a problem with stories can be if we wander into the story and we don't clearly communicate to the person listening to the story, where is this going? So let me give you an example. If you said, oh, you know, so there was this time actually, it was probably like, yeah, it was a year ago because I remember it was like Halloween and I just moved in with my aunt. And anyway, I was driving along and I remember I was late that day. Suddenly it seems like a big ramble and someone doesn't feel very invested and intrigued to listen to the end because they don't know where this story is going. So instead, you really wanna give your stories a headline. You could say something like, hey, this reminds me of the time I got lost in Vegas. Or hey, let me tell you about the time where I got stuck in the snow. So immediately, we kind of, in the headline, we get to the punchline of the story and we let the person know where this story is heading. That helps them to relax because they have a sense of a time frame around this story and it builds anticipation for what's gonna come. The second step is called a you hook. Now this is all about allowing the listener to really identify with what's going on in the story. Again, to avoid a monologue or a ramble, you don't want to just keep talking and talking and talking and never checking in with your audience. It's really important that you say phrases like, have you ever heard this? Or I don't know if this is, you've had an experience like this. I don't think you will have ever done this because you're far cleverer than I am the common thread between all those statements is you use the word you. Now you is kind of a magical word in the conversation because it grabs someone's attention and it helps them to relate themselves to what you're talking about. So before we carry on with a story and at key points within an anecdote, depending on how long it is, we want to keep looking for that audience engagement and to keep relating it to somebody. The third step is we now need context. Now we wanna set the scene. And when you're setting the scene and telling a person about kind of where the story was and what time of year it is, you really want to use very sensory words. So don't be limited to just what you can see. It could be like, you're talking about autumn or fall, as you call it in the States. And you could say, you know, I could just smell, you know, it had that real smell of like bonfires in the air or there are really crunchy leaves on the path. Uh, so so um, my mum had just made this wicked apple pie. So whatever you say, let's set, or probably it'd be pumpkin pie, probably pumpkin for Halloween. Anyway, you set the scene by describing sensory details. It's actually better that someone has some specific imagery to work with, whether that's crunchy leaves, tasty pumpkin pie, the smell of bonfires in the air. That's usually a lot more atmospheric than if we just say, it was the 31st of October. So really set the scene by using that more sensory language. The fourth step is you want to introduce the hero of the story, which is probably you. Um, so at this point in time, you want to say, give yourself a little bit, again, a bit of background story about you. So you could say, and I was just in one of these crazy moods. Or I was just in the mood to try and do something different. Or I just had this funny idea that things weren't gonna work out well that day. So we want to, again, kind of give the listener an indication of how you were and what your state of mind was at the time that things happened. The fifth step you wanna take is we wanna add some drama into this. My favorite phrase to use this is to say suddenly. 
suddenly there was this like fluke snowfall. Suddenly I found myself in the back room of a casino. It introduces an element of like daring and danger and it's like the dramatic point of the story. So this is what, again going to really grab people's attention and help highlight to them, hey, this is the bit that you remember from the headline, so I'm still talking about the same thing. The sixth step to telling that story is you want to resolve it. You're going to say, luckily, oh, thankfully. So whether it's like a snowplow turned up or you found yourself back in your bedroom fully clothed and your wallet hadn't been stolen, whatever the end of the story is, we want to tie it up neatly so there's been a positive resolution to the drama that had unfolded in the step before. Finally, step seven, kind of optional, but I really like it, is you might want to add a moral to your story. So this is where you give a kind of meaning to everything that's happened and show how it may have changed your perception or something about you as a person. Now, this is really cool as well, because in terms of communicating to our potential dates or people we're connecting with what we're about, this is a very strong way of implying who we are rather than stating it. Um, if you haven't already, watch my conversation hack video, video on showing, not telling, which will describe this point in more detail. I've linked it beneath this video. So a moral could be, and that's the last time I decided that I was going to go totally wild and crazy. Or that was it. From then onwards, I've been so much better prepared. Think about what meaning you want to give to a story and what you want the story to tell the person you're sharing with about who you are as a person. Stories can be an amazing way to fill conversation, but they're also a really powerful tool to tell someone something about yourself in a way that slips under the radar and really sticks with a person. So if you want to develop your abilities to be an amazing storyteller, you can hop over to my channel and check out some of my other conversation skills videos that are on there. Um, if you're a guy that's watching, you might also want to check out hayleyquinn.com forward slash unite. If you're a woman, hayleyquinn.com forward slash real love, where I've got lots of practical advice on how you can improve your dating skills. The links are just beneath this video. And if you haven't already, I would really appreciate a like, a comment, a share, or even dare I say it, a subscribe to my channel as well.